While we were all distracted by the spectacle of the Trump arraignment, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get that image out of my mind of President Trump taking his motorcade from Trump Tower to the Manhattan courthouse and walking into that courtroom to be arrested and fingerprinted. While we were all mesmerized in this sort of morbid curiosity way, like you can't look away from a car wreck even though what's happening before your very eyes is so grotesque, something arguably more important to the 2024 election was happening in the Midwest. And I wanna caveat this by saying a lot of the commentary surrounding the Trump arraignment had to do with, well, does this impact Trump's chances of securing the Republican nomination for president in 2024 or his overall chances of winning the general election if he secures the Republican nomination? Actually, most of the commentary revolved around that. There were a lot of people that said, it's going to guarantee that Trump wins the nomination. There were a lot of people that said, this is what the Democrats actually want because they want Trump to run in the general election because they think that they can defeat him because they already have a strategy, a playbook that they practiced in 2020 that worked. I'm in that camp. That's what I think. I think the Democrats want Trump to be the nominee because I think that they believe their 2020 playbook of electioneering and using the media to vilify Trump in the eyes of the voting public, as well as using the power of the federal government or the power in this case of the Manhattan district attorney to target Trump with the law. I think they believe that they can defeat him. So they hope that it galvanizes them. But this, this, this idea or this question is a good question. Is this going to impact the 2024 election? And if so, how? But while we were so obsessively watching all of the video footage and refreshing our phones and our Twitter feeds, waiting for every update about this unsealed indictment, something was happening in the state of Wisconsin that is going to have a greater influence over the outcome of the 2024 election than anything happening to Trump in the courtroom. The Wisconsin Supreme Court has changed demographics, meaning it was conservative majority for a long time. And on the same day that Trump was arraigned in a Manhattan courthouse, the Wisconsin Supreme Court election happened in Wisconsin and conservatives lost the majority. It is now a majority liberal Supreme Court. And the woman who was elected, Judge Janet, I have to look up exactly how to pronounce her name because I can never remember. Janet Protosawitz, Protosawitz is a crazy lady. She is a nutcase and not just nutty on your run of the mill leftist social issues. Wisconsin is a pivotal swing state in presidential elections now. We have our new swing states are Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Wisconsin. You can make a completely valid argument that Hillary Clinton lost. One of the reasons that Hillary Clinton lost, one of the big reasons that she lost in 2016 was because she didn't visit the state of Wisconsin because she just ignored this gigantic state, assuming that it would go blue, assuming that she, she just took for granted all the people in the state of Wisconsin. And because she didn't visit and because Trump did visit, the people in the state of Wisconsin voted for Trump and Hillary Clinton lost the election. I know. There's a lot of factors that went into Hillary Clinton's loss and into Donald Trump's victory, but Wisconsin, inarguably, was a huge, huge factor. Enter 2020, it becomes a massive battleground state and litigation in the state of Wisconsin over, oh, the buzzword that YouTube hates when I say election integrity has been something that other states, even swing states, have not seen to the extent that Wisconsin has. And now, we're gonna, we're gonna get into all of that, don't worry, I'm gonna detail exactly what's happened in the state of Wisconsin in the past almost, well, two and a half years now, since the 2020 presidential election, and why some of the critical reforms that have happened in Wisconsin are on the chopping block, thanks to, essentially, I hate to call out my own here, but Republicans messing up this Supreme Court election in Wisconsin. What did Republicans do wrong? How are we making the same mistakes over and over again? And how can we avoid making these mistakes in 2024? Because I gotta tell you guys, it was devastating enough to lose the midterm elections, or I know we technically won the 2022 elections because we won more seats. We did not experience the red wave that we wanted to experience, that many of us, including me, inaccurately predicted that we would experience. Why was that? 
a multitude of factors. It's easy to play Monday morning quarterback and look back and say, oh, okay, this is why we lost 2022, but we didn't learn any lessons from 2022 from those midterm elections. Those same mistakes were made again by Republicans in the state of Wisconsin, and it led to this massive loss that could impact the outcome of the 2024 presidential election. So we are going to break all of these details down because my friends, we cannot afford to be making these mistakes. And these aren't mistakes that we have to be making. We can do better. We can win these elections and we must. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.